In the last 12 to 18 months, there has been an absolute surge of AI academic tools that have been pumped out for students and academics to use to supercharge their writing or their productivity or their analysis. And in today's video, I'm going to be going through five of the hottest tools that I have tried out or I have discovered or I have used recently. And I think that you guys will probably also enjoy it. Okay, so the first is Claude, and Claude is essentially just like ChatGPT. It's an alternative to ChatGPT that I would arguably say is slightly better. Um, I don't know why, I kind of like it a little bit more. I feel like it is a little bit more authentic in its result and its output, and it doesn't sound as AI as ChatGPT does, if that makes any sense. So this is what Claude looks like. As you can see, it feels a bit more like a search engine and then you can ask any questions. So for example, I'm going to say, what is the role of IQ? I'm going to ask a very sciencey question um, in the cell cortex. So of course you can use it for your personal life, for planning, for holiday ideas and things like that, but I'm going to test all of these tools out for academics and for research and things like that. So you can see here that it has given me a nice description, the main functions, which is really good. And the one thing that you can see is that they don't have any references. So let's see if they would add some references for me. Can you give me some citations to support the text above. Um, sometimes it, these AI tools will say, no, we cannot provide this to you. Okay, so here it says, sure. Here are some relevant citations and they are mixed in terms of how recent they are. Okay, this review mentions interaction, nice. This review discusses the role. This study demonstrates, I like this. I like that it gives you a bit of a summary after just to quickly kind of say what the paper is discussing, which is quite nice. Um, of course, please make sure that if you are doing this, you check, you go and actually search for this research paper, go and read it and make sure that it's accurate and states what it says it states here on Claude because ChatGPT is quite inaccurate when it comes to this. Um, but I think this is really useful. They also have a pro version and I'm just kind of briefly going through each one of these to introduce it to you. But there are so many different abilities that um, all of these tools I'm going to be going through uh, do have. This is completely free to use. It's a great place to start if you want to try a very basic AI tool. Okay, so the next one is called SciSpace. And when you search for SciSpace.com, you enter this screen and it says that we are now at typeset. Um, I'm not sure what's happening here, but anyway, you can direct yourself very easily to uh, typeset.io. And it's essentially a bit of a search engine, but it's a very specific engine for research papers and for academics. So there are a number of different things that you can do. And I really like this platform because it gives you a lot of different tools that can support you on your research journey. So one of the first things that you can do is search for literature and this would be amazing if you're trying to find papers to help you with your literature search um, and help you with your literature review. So I don't know, let me just click on one of the ones that they've suggested. The nice thing about this is it gives you the more information on each paper. So you can see here that they've given me a number of papers that support um, the question I asked and an insight kind of generated from the top five papers. And then it gives me insights from each of the papers individually, which I think is so powerful. So here, for example, the second one, this one does not provide it, but it focuses on this. This paper states that. You can even open up more columns on the right hand side to things like include the conclusion and it will give you conclusions for each of those papers. You can say add the methods used and it will add another column for methods used. And you know, if you're if you're trying to go through a number of papers and you don't want to necessarily open each one up just to discover a bit of background information, this can actually be such a powerful way of skimming through papers. And then you can also export this to wherever you want uh, in order to maybe save it as a reference list for later. So that's the first way. I think that's really, really cool, really powerful. Another thing that you can do is extract data so you can upload um, a certain number of PDFs, I think it's, yeah, 10, um, 10 PDFs, and extract information from those PDFs. So as I just showed you earlier with the previous part, you can add more columns, you can do the same thing, but with your own papers. 
You can also ask questions on certain PDFs. So you can upload a PDF here and then ask a question about that PDF to understand it quicker. And then you can also paraphrase as well. It has so many capabilities and it's all for free. I think they do have a premium plan, but uh, you can, as you can see, you can do most things for free. And I think it's really cool. Um, there's just so much capability with SciSpace. I really love it. The next tool is called Scholarcy, and I might have mentioned this in the past before, like a long time ago, but I haven't used it since. But this is um, something that I've rediscovered recently. It's called Scholarcy. It's a really powerful article summarizer. If you're reading an article, you're able to summarize that article by using um, Scholarcy. That, that would include sort of like key concepts, the methods, the limitations, the abstract, and it will present it to you on flashcards. So let's take a look at how we can use this. There's kind of five main steps. The first is that they suggest background reading. So if you're new to a particular field, they can generate some reading lists for you, which is quite helpful, I think, as a starting point. They can highlight important points from a research paper. Again, really, really helpful. Um, they can create reference summaries for, again, topics that you want to maybe generate. They can create a summary for you. They can find references, so go through all the literature and find references, again, for you to be able to use and read. And then also extract tables and figures um, and just ensure that you understand uh, and you can calculate your own results from these tables and figures. Feel free to try it out. It's also integrated within uh, our discovery, which is another AI tool that you can use for research reading. So if you just want to use our discovery, then you'll find that Scholarcy is integrated within it to help you with summarizing the papers that you've pulled out. And the fourth tool is called Semantic Scholar. And again, I don't think I've mentioned this on this channel before. It's a, again, a free AI powered research tool for scientific literature. So this reminds me a little bit of your PubMed, your Google Scholar, but AI based. So let's see if I can get uh, something, cancer research, um, again, just using something very specific. And you can see that there's a very uh, cool list and very clear list of papers that are related to this. And um, what I like to see when I do this is, is that papers are more recent. And I find that when I do a search like this on uh, PubMed or Google Scholar, the references they give me tend to be quite old and quite dated. Um, I know you can narrow them down. I know that you can get the more recent ones, but I find that when I use AI tools, they tend to give me more recent papers. So you can see that this was literally published this month. Wow. Of course you do have older ones, um, but you won't typically find like very, very old papers. They do tend to give you the more recent papers. So that's quite interesting. And the last tool, but definitely not the least, is called Julius. And Julius is one of the only AI tools that I have found that support with um, computational data and analysis. Typically, I, I mean, people ask me all the time, do you know any AI tools that help you with analyzing data? And I tend to say no, because I, don't, I actually don't know any, but this is one that I discovered maybe about a month ago now, and I think it's really, really handy and really useful. So you can use it for, for example, charts and graphs, for creating really um, sleek looking data. So something like this, um, when you input your data, of course, you can get answers from your data. So again, you put your data in and it can give you some answers as to what that data could mean. You can do some advanced analysis. So perform an ANOVA on the data set and it can do that for you. Uh, problem solving, it's got a screenshot. Oh, okay, wow, you can do it from screenshots. Okay, interesting. So you can put a screenshot of some mathematical question and it can solve the problem for you and you can also generate re results. This is actually really, I didn't realize it could do this. I'm learning something new here, guys, too. Um, but I think it's really, really handy and quite unique in that it allows you to use your data and get different level of insights. Um, so if you're someone that wants to find something for analysis, then I think you might like Julius. Okay, so that, those are five tools that I am really enjoying and I think that I highly recommend for someone who's looking for AI tools for writing, reading, or even for analysis. If you have any other suggestions, then I'm always looking for new tools that I could share with you and that I can use as well. So please leave them down below in the comments. And if you want to see more videos like this, then also do let me know. And if you want like a deep dive on any AI tools, I know that I do quite 
um, a brisk overview of them. But if you want maybe a deep dive on a specific one, then I'd be happy to maybe do a quick sort of five, 10 minute video on one specific tool that could help you um, with using it. And yeah, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.